Hello, in this video we discuss joint distributions. So far we have discussed situations in which I have a single random variable x. For example, if x is a discrete random variable, I normally consider its probability mass function. Uh, or if x, x is a discrete random variable, I usually talk about its probability density function. Now, in real life, uh, we usually have more than one random variable to consider at a time. Uh, for example, if you are looking at an investment problem, you might have several stocks uh, to consider, for example, X, Y, and Z, and so on. So you need to be able to analyze several random variables at a time, and that's a discussion that we will have here. So we start with a situation in which, in which I have two random variables, X and Y, and then when you understand two random variables, it's easy to generalize to three and more. So uh, this, the discussion here is very similar to the discussion that we had for one random variable. Whatever you have, the, we had for one random variable, we extended to uh, two random variables. Uh, for example, we, uh, for one random variable, we talked about probability mass function. Uh, for two discrete random variables, we talk about uh, joint probability mass function, and so on. So first, we discuss, uh, we consider situations in which I have two discrete random variables, and in later videos, we talk about two continuous random variables. Let's assume that I have two random variables, x and y, and we want to know how to um, deal with them. Remember, if I have a single discrete random variable x, I define its probability mass function as px of x is the probability that the random variable x takes the value x. And the range of that random variable, uh, we defined it as, as all possible values of x, right? All possible values of x. Now, if I have two random variables, uh, it's very similar. If I have two random variables x and y, we defined joint probability mass function as follows. It's be showed by pxy of x and y is the probability that the random variable x is equal to x and, so we put a comma here, the random variable y is equal to y. Remember, comma always means and. And the range, again, is similar. It's a set of all possible uh, values of x and y. So it's a set of all, you know, x, y's such that, you know, probability of them is positive. The probability mass function is positive. And we, we can show all of these points, uh, the points in the range, in a two-dimensional graph. So if, if this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis, so I can put all of these points here. So for example, this is point 1 and 1, and if pxy of 1 and 1 is equal to, let's say, 1 over 4, that means that the probability of this point is equal to 1 over 4. And basically, uh, I can calculate any probability that I want. For example, if I want to know the probability of uh, these three points, if I want to know the probability that xy is one of these uh, three points, I just add the, their probabilities. Um, so to summarize, the joint probability mass function of two discrete random variables x and y is defined as this. Uh, and as I said, any probability that we want for these two random variables, we should be able to calculate from the joint probability mass function. For example, um, note that if I add the probabilities, all the probabilities of these points in the range, what should I get? Exactly, I should get 1. So if I sum over all x, y's in the range, Of course, this, you know, the probability of all points must add to 1. So, again, as I said, the summation of uh, all the probabilities in the range uh, is equal to 1. And as I said, if you want uh, any probability, you should be able to use the probability mass function to calculate it. For example, if you want to know the probability that x, y is equal to 1, 1 or 1, 2, basically you add the probabilities for these two points. More generally, if you want to know the probability that the, you know, the two random variables x, y, the, the pair, belongs to any set A in, in the two-dimensional plane, so if this is you know, x, y, you know, if you consider any set A, you look at how many points are in A and add the probabilities in, in those points. So you look at all x, y, x i's, y, j's uh, in A, and you add the probability of the, those points. So to better understand all of these, and practice these concepts, let's look at an example. So uh, here I have two random variables x and y, and I, I am giving you the joint PMF 
of them in uh, this table. So, for example, if I look at this point here, it's the probability that x is equal to 0 and y equal to 0 is 1 over 6. So, uh, the joint PMF is given in a table, and you can also show it like this. Uh, you know, this is x, this is y, and the height here shows the probability of each point. So, this is just another visual way of looking at them, but for this problem, you can just focus on this table. So, I have this table that gives uh, you the all probabilities, and I am asking you several questions. For example, what's the probability that x is equal to 0 and y is less than or equal to 1? Uh, I want you to find the marginal PMFs of x and y, which means that I want you to find the, you know, PMF of x, Px of x, and P y uh, and y for all possible x and y's um, so we call these uh, marginal pmfs and so on so there are four questions here i suggest that you solve these problems before watching the rest of the video okay so let's look at the solution uh, of this problem so part a probability that x is equal to zero and y less than or equal to one so x equal to zero we must be here right that's all we have and y less than or equal to one uh, because y can only take three values, 0, 1, and 2, uh, y less than or equal to 1 means that we are here, you know, y is either 0 or 1. So basically, for the first uh, part, we need to add these two probabilities. So this is equal to pxy of 0 and 1 plus pxy of, uh, sorry, 0 and 0, and plus pxy of 0 and 1, which is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4, which becomes... Uh, I believe 5 over 12. For part B, we need to find the marginal PMFs of x and y. So we need to find Px of x and Py of y. So first we note that uh, from the, you know, again, table, x can only take two values. So uh, the range of x is just 0 and 1, and y can only take three values. Again, 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. Um, so Ry is equal to 0, 1, 2. So for x, uh, to find the PMF, Px of 0, is the probability that x is equal to 0. We just add uh, the, you know, these three probabilities. So it's equal to Pxy of 0 and 0, Pxy of 0 and 1, plus Pxy of 0 and 2, which is, again, 1 over 6, plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 8, which is... 4 plus 6 plus 3 over 24, which is uh, 13 over 24. So that's probability that x is equal to 0. And uh, probability, because x is a Bernoulli random variable, to find probability that x equals 1 is just 1 minus px of 0. Or you can simply add these three uh, values here. So you will obtain 1 minus 13 over 24, which is 11 over 24. So that's a probability mass function of x. You can do the same thing for y. Uh, again, Py of 0, if I want to find the probability that y is equal to 0, I need to add these three, uh, these two values, right? 1 over 6 plus 1 over 8, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 8, 14 over 48, which is 7 over 24. And similarly, Py of 1 is, you know, you add these two values, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6, which is 5 over 12, and Py of 2 also becomes uh, 7 over 24. So we can generalize this. Uh, in general, if you have the joint PMF, you should be able to find uh, the marginal PMFs. So if I, if I want to fi find Px of x for any value fix x, all I'm going to do, I'm going to sum over all possible you know, y's, so of all possible yj's, Pxy, x and y j's right this is in fact application of law of total probability and similarly for y if i want to know the probability of any fix y i just sum over all possible x's so it's p x y of x i y so again as i said this is just application of law of total probability to summarize we can always find the marginal pmfs of x and y from the joint pmfs as I said, joint PMFs gives you everything that you need uh, for two discrete random variables. Okay, so the next part of the question was, uh, we want to find probability that y equals 1 given that x is equal to 0. So that's part C of the question. 
So we want to know the probability that y equals 1 given that x is equal to 0. And again, this is just a conditional probability problem. Uh, we know how to solve conditional probability problems. This is uh, probability uh, of y equals 1 and x equals to 0 divided by probability that x is equal to 0. And this is by definition of the joint PMF PXY of 0 and 1. Probability that x is equal to 0, y equals 1 divided by Px of 0. Since we already know the joint PMF and marginal PMF, we can just replace these. So Px of 0, if I remember correctly, what was that? Uh, Px of 0 was um, probability that x is equal to 0, 13 over 24. Sorry. So 13 over 24. And uh, Py of, uh, Pxy of 0 and 1 is this point, right? 0 and 1, 1 over 4. So 1 over 4, and this becomes 6 over 13. And finally, the last part of the question ask, uh, asks us if x and y are independent. In fact, given what we have done so far, it's very easy to answer that question. If x and y were independent, we should have, uh, you know, probability that y equals 1 given that x is equal to 0 must be equal to, um, you know, y equals 1, right? If, if they are independent. If independent, then we must have this be in Knowing that x is equal to 0 should not change the probability uh, that y equals 1. Uh, in this case, we found that this probability was 6 over 13, but probability that y equals 1, uh, again, we found that previously, was equal to probability that y equals 1 is 5 over 12. Right? It's 5 over 12. So this is 5 over 12. Obviously, these two are not equal. Uh, so we conclude that X and Y are not independent. Um, another way of doing this, uh, if, if you want to check uh, if two random variables X and Y, if you want to check if the two random variables are independent, X and Y, we should have uh, probability PXY of X, I, and YJ must be equal to probability that X is equal to uh, X, I, and Y equals YJ for all i's and j's. So if this is true, then x and y are independent. If not, if you just find a single point for which, you know, this is not true, then x and y are not independent. Again, uh, you can just check this and you will see that uh, x and y are not independent in this example. Okay, thank you.